have you ever looked at a food label and thought, this looks more like a chemistry textbook? And I know with all the different food ingredients we use in products today, it's easy to get this feeling that your food is full of scary sounding chemicals. So today I'm going to break down 15 common food ingredients that might sound spooky, but are actually totally harmless and often beneficial for your health. Let's start with tocopherols. Now I know that might seem like a mouthful, but tocopherols is just another name for vitamin E. And you know, this is obviously very important for your health, but tocopherols, it has actually a second role in food and in our body. It's an antioxidant. So vitamin E is an antioxidant, which just prevents oxidative stress in our body. It prevents aging and certain diseases but also in food, it prevents sort of oxidative stress, which is oxidative rancidity. So you might see tocopherols in foods where there's a lot of fat and oil because this antioxidant slows those fats from becoming rancid and stinky and smelly. Locust bean gum. So despite the name, locust bean gum has nothing to do with the insect called locusts or from bugs at all. We actually get this thickener, it's uh, in the seeds of the carob tree. So locust bean gum, this is a natural thickener. We use it to add viscosity or body to foods like cream cheese or yogurt. And especially if you buy like the low fat or reduced fat version of foods, you will often see locust bean gum as well as our next ingredient, xanthan gum. If you love creamy foods, but often choose the low fat or no fat option, xanthan gum is probably your best friend. Xanthan gum is a natural thickener we add to foods to give it body, especially if something is low fat or we've removed some of the fat from it. Now I know xanthan is kind of like a weird word, it starts with an X, but the reason this ingredient has this name is it's made by a bacteria. So for natural ingredients, we're sort of limited to ingredients that are made from plants, animals, or microorganisms. So xanthan gum is named after the bacteria that makes it, and that's called xanthomonas compestris. This one you're really gonna think should be in a laboratory. Let's talk about pyridoxine hydrochloride. So this is just another way of saying vitamin B6. If you hear pyridoxine, pyridoxamine, pyridoxal, these are different forms of vitamin B6, which is really important for you to get in your diet, for your immune function, for your nervous system. So you want to get, be getting vitamin B6. Most often you're going to see the pyridoxine hydrochloride. You'll see this in uh, cereals, grains, those types of food products. We'll have this vitamin added to make them more nutritious. Okay, let's tackle calcium pantothenate. This is vitamin B5. If you see pantothenate, pantothenic acid, always think vitamin B5 because there are a couple different versions, but calcium pantothenate, you're going to see this in any foods that are fortified like uh, breads or cereals. It's also naturally occurring in eggs and whole grains. And this vitamin is really key for your body because it helps us digest uh, carbohydrates, fats, and lipids. So you definitely want to make sure you're getting vitamin B5 or calcium pantothenic. Dacosa hexanoic acid. Let's shorten that to DHA. This is just a specific omega-3 fatty acid. So you'll say DHA in foods. The other omega Omega-3 you'll likely see is called eicosapentaenoic acid or EPA, but these are very important for your eye and your brain health. You want to make sure to get your omega-3s and you'll see this in foods like your fish or your seaweed and even some uh, chicken eggs now. They're actually fortified with omega-3s just because we've realized how important DHA and EPA are to human health. Okay, now we have lactic acid, which is very common in the food supply because it can provide flavor, but also help with some food safety issues. Now, lactic acid is going to be found in a lot of dairy uh, fermented products. Uh, so something like yogurt and even sauerkraut because bacteria in the foods produce lactic acid. And it's this lactic acid that gives these uh, foods sort of like their sourness or their tanginess, their zing. 
but lactic acid is an acid, so it also acts as a preservative because it lowers the pH of the food and makes it harder for spoilage microorganisms to go. So it has sort of a twofold purpose as a food ingredient. Inulin, that's kind of a fun one to say. So inulin is from chicory root. And inulin, this is a dietary fiber. So if you're anyone who buys, you know, at the grocery store, those high fiber granola bars or high fiber snacks, if you turn around the food product, you'll probably see inulin on the ingredient statement. And that's because inulin is a fiber, it's a dietary fiber, so we don't digest it. It makes it to the bacteria in our gut and the bacteria actually use the inulin. So this type of fiber is really good to help with gut health. Let's move on to ferrous gluconate. What the heck is ferrous gluconate? Well, this is iron or a source of iron that is commonly found in foods. So this is going to help with your body needs iron for energy, for immune function. And if I had to guess, you're going to see ferrous gluconate um, on the ingredient statement for breads and cereals most commonly. Okay, this one's really long. 125-dehydroxycholecalciferol. I know that seems crazy. What is this ingredient? Maybe you have a guess. This is vitamin D. So another vitamin with a very long name, but of course vitamin D is really important. You wanna make sure you're eating your dairy foods. Some juices have vitamin D. And why it's so important is vitamin D helps regulate calcium absorption. It helps with immune function and probably most importantly with bone health. Ascorbic acid. So what is this ascorbic acid? Well, don't get too worried. This is simply another name for vitamin C. So it's obviously very important for your health. But ascorbic acid is one of these vitamins that also has a second purpose. It's an antioxidant, just like how we talked about vitamin E or tocopherols. So you might also see uh, ascorbic acid in food products to prevent fat or those fats and oils from oxidizing again, just like we talked about earlier with tocopherols. Let's talk about agar. So this is a food ingredient made from seaweed, and I think it's becoming more and more common because it's a vegan-friendly alternative to gelatin. So agar is a thickener. You'll see this in a lot of jams, jellies, and desserts to give these foods a little bit of body to them. And agar, besides being a great thickener, has a lot of other benefits. So it's actually a fiber. A lot of people are trying to add fiber to their diet. It can make you feel full for longer. It helps regulate your intestines. So agar actually has a lot of health benefits and benefits as an ingredient in foods. This one is sometimes a little tricky for me to say. We have lecithin. Now you will find lecithin in a whole bunch of foods from uh, chocolates, salad dressings, uh, plant-based milks, a lot of different foods because lecithin is an emulsifier. Basically, it's a food ingredient that makes oil and water sort of play nicer together instead of separating out into two different phases. Now, most commonly you might see uh, lecithin, you can get it in egg yolks. So that's why egg yolks are included in a lot of different baking recipes um, for the lecithin. But lecithin can also uh, come from soybeans and that's becoming more and more common. Next up is ascorbyl palmitate. So this is another form of vitamin C. If you remember, we already talked about ascorbic acid being vitamin C and this is ascorbyl palmitate. Now, really, the difference here is that ascorbic acid dissolves in water, where ascorbyl palmitate dissolves in fats and oils. So say your food is mostly water, well, then you're probably going to see on the ingredient list ascorbic acid. But if your food is mostly a fat or an oil, now you're probably going to see ascorbyl palmitate. So they're both forms of vitamin C, but have uses in different types of food. Last up, we have acetic acid. Anyone know what common ingredient is acetic acid? Type it in the comments. This is really just vinegar, or vinegar is actually very diluted acetic acid. Vinegar is usually 10% acetic acid. So the reason we use vinegar as an ingredient is usually as a preservative, because again, it's an acid. It lowers the pH, makes it harder for those spoilage microorganisms to go. And it also gives us that like tangy or sour flavor we sort of associate fermented foods and vinegar with. 
So the next time you look at a food label, don't let those big words scare you. These food ingredients make sure your food supply is safe, enjoyable, and nutritious to eat. If you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend watching my full guide on food preservatives.